Hey guys, what is up and welcome back. Welcome to day two of Booktember. I am so excited to sit down and talk to you guys today all about the books that I'm most excited for coming out in September, October, and I think there might be one or two in November, but I tried to stick to September and October. These are fall releases that I'm looking forward to the most. I'm gonna go ahead and get started because I have quite a bit to talk about. A few of which I didn't really know were coming out until I decided to kind of peruse Goodreads a couple of days ago and see if there are any new ones that I may have missed that I would be super excited in, and I did find a few. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So the first book I'm going to be talking about is actually City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. This is a book that is actually going to be arriving to my house today, but I wanted to let you guys know about it because I feel like everybody needs to read it. This is actually a middle grade book. I've been trying to avoid spoilers for it. The only thing that I really know is that it's middle grade, it has a female main character, and it's a little bit spoopy. It has some ghosts in it, obviously. I believe there's a cat. There's a cat on the cover, so I'm going to assume there's some kind of cat animal in this book. The only other thing that I know about this novel is that our main character's parents are actually ghost hunters. That is the only things that I know about this, but I'm super excited to finally have it in my grubby little hands. I'm sure it's actually probably sitting on my porch right now and I should go out and get it. But if you guys don't have this pre-ordered, if you haven't received it yet, I would recommend it. The reviews are 100% glowing on it. The only negative reviews that I have seen are actually people wondering um, who it was written for because it's written for a younger audience and they didn't know that. So just be aware going into it that it is a middle grade book, but honestly, it just sounds cute and adorable while also slightly creepy which I feel like V.E. Schwab is very good at doing. The next one that I'm really excited for is Wild Card. I am so excited for this book. I feel like Marie did such a good job with Warcross. If you guys are not familiar we actually did that for Hypernaut. I will link it in the cards up above if you guys would like my full review for that but I am so excited to get back into the world. I'm so excited to see my boo Hideo again. I cannot wait. If you guys are not familiar I loved that book so much that I actually had a custom candle made just for it. It was just really interesting and fun and kind of lighthearted at the same time. It did obviously have its flaws, but I can't wait to read Wildcard. I've just heard really great things about it. It follows our main character, Mika. She's kind of like a bounty hunter, essentially. She's trying to just make ends meet because she lives a very rough life and she actually gets into the Warcross Championships, but the Warcross Championships are actually hacked and just the ending of that book, uh, the per one of the people I was reading it with kind of saw it coming, but I did not. I was blown away by it and I just think it, the technology and the the storyline itself was really interesting so if you're looking for something similar to Ready Player One but done in I think a little bit easier to digest kind of way I think you guys would be really interested in Warcraft and alternatively in Wildcard. The next book that I'm really excited about is For Amuse the Fire by Heidi Hellig. This is a book that I have seen all over the place that follows Jetta. Her family is a famous troupe of shadow players but essentially what is kind of cool about Jetta is she's able to actually control puppets with her blood but what people don't know is the puppets that she's actually controlling contain spirits of recently passed people and that sounds so cool to me that sounds like the perfect fall read honestly I'm looking for really spoopy things to kind of read this season so I am 100% going to be picking this up as soon as it gets out or I'm going to be alternatively pre-ordering it it just sounds so cool it sounds so creepy but also kind of interesting like it's not a storyline that I've ever read before and I believe it is a YA novel as well the next book I want to talk about is actually by one of my new favorite authors via Kimi Don Bowman and that would be Summer Bird Blue. I have heard so many good things about this book. I'm trying to kind of avoid spoilers for it. The only thing that I know is that it does follow our main character Rumi and she is kind of worried about having the right answers for things like what to do in a certain situation, what to eat, where to go, what to wear, that kind of thing. But the only thing that she's actually 100% sure of is that she wants to, for the rest of her life essentially, write music with her younger sister. And I think that that sounds so cool. Everyone I know that has read this book has said it's slice of life, but it's also, it has a little bit more of a heavy topic to it as well. But the thing that really gets me about this book is Rumi's actual younger sister Leah actually dies. And the reason why this book I feel like holds a special place for me or will hold a special place for me is I feel like grieving and death has been very close to me this year. And I think this is a book that is probably going to really affect me, but also because this book really revolves around her trying to find her love of music again. She's actually sent to live with her aunt in Hawaii and I feel like it just seems like a really nice coming of age novel. I wish I would have had this book a little bit further um, earlier in the year, maybe during the summertime, but I'm actually still really excited to read it regardless. I love heavy content books that are done in a very digestible way and I think Akimi Don Bowman does that really well. If you guys haven't read Starfish, I would 10 out of 10 recommend it. It was a very cute read. 
Now the next book I want to read is actually a book that I hadn't seen before. I've seen the cover of it, but when I was perusing Goodreads, I actually saw it and was like, wow, that sounds really cool. It's Not Even Bones by Rebecca Schaefer. This sounds super cool because it's touted as Dexter meets this savage song. It's a dark fantasy about a girl who sells magical body parts on the black market. So basically this follows Nita and her mother. Nita and her mom actually harvest organs from supernatural beings and sell them on the black market. But her mom actually brings home someone who's alive and Nita says, I don't want anything to do with this. But when she tries to save the alive being, she actually in turn ends up sold on the black market. And it sounds so cool. This is going to be what I believe is a series. It says volume one here, so I'm assuming there's going to be more of them. I don't know anything about it. It has four and a half stars already. There's 142 ratings, and I just, it sounds so cool. I'm such a fan of this Savage Song. I haven't seen Dexter, but I do kind of like the storyline from what I've heard. So I'm really excited to pick this up, and I cannot wait until it comes out. Now the next book that I have here doesn't have the best readings on Goodreads, but I'm definitely not one who's deterred by that. And that would be The Lantern's Ember by Colleen Houck. I cannot wait to read this. This actually follows our main character who makes a deal 500 years in the past and he doesn't really remember the stipulations on what his deal was, why he made it, but he essentially becomes a lantern or somebody who guards the gates to the underworld. But one day he meets a girl that they just call Ember and she is a witch and she feels drawn to the underworld and they have to kind of smuggle her in. It sounds really cool to me. I don't know a whole lot about it. I'm trying to avoid spoilers because it does have such, it, it has a 3.7 or 3.3 star review on Goodreads right now. So it may not be the best book, but it sounds interesting enough that I want to pick it up. Now the next book I have here is actually Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. We have another V.E. Schwab book on here. Who is surprised? She's pumping them out this year. This is the book that follows Vicious, which is actually our Hypernaut read for this month. You guys will see a review for that coming at the end of the month. I am avoiding all spoilers for Vengeful. I don't know what it's about because I am trying to read Vicious right now and I don't want to kind of look up the content of that in case I am spoiled for what I am currently reading. But I can't wait to read that and I can't wait until the second book comes out and I do already have it pre-ordered, thank God, but that definitely comes out in the month of September. Now the next book I already actually have pre-ordered and I'm super excited for it because I have not read anything by Hank Green, but it is an absolutely remarkable thing. Essentially this follows our main character, her and her family come home one night and there's a giant robot in her backyard and she's trying to figure out what the hell it is, but her friend comes over, records it and puts it on the internet and overnight she actually becomes a YouTube sensation. I think that this is so cool. Hank, if you are not familiar, is one of the very, very first people to kind of wind up on YouTube, him and his brother, John Green, who we are all familiar with. And I'm so excited to read this. I cannot wait until this comes out. The reason why I'm excited to read this is because I feel like Hank, just as a person, same with John, I feel like they have a lot of good insight into what it is to be human, kind of like the normal struggles that just we as people kind of go through. So I cannot wait to read this. I think it sounds really cool. I also like that the MC at that point kind of has to struggle with who she is and her identity and protecting herself and it just sounds heartwarming but also interesting as well as I kind of do really enjoy a lot of like giant robot things. Obviously I did read the Themis files this year and was absolutely in love with it so any book that has more giant robots in it I am 100% down for. Now the next book I'm actually just going to briefly touch on but it is my most anticipated release of probably my entire life and that would be Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas. I cannot wait for this book you guys. I don't care what anyone says. I love this series so much more than I love the Akatar series. I think Throne of Glass is so much better. I am definitely just one of those people and I don't care really like what she's done. The series has given me so much. It's given me characters that I absolutely know and love and I just I need to have them back. I need to know what's going on. I need the conclusion. Um, after Tower of Dawn I was like all right I'm ready. My body's ready. Give me the next one. So I'm still kind of waiting, but it's coming out this year and your girl's pumped. Other than that ugly as hell cover, why in God's name is it gold? It does not match anything else that I have, but that's okay. Either way, I cannot wait to read it. When it comes out, I'm going to set aside every single other thing that I'm reading and binge that as soon as possible. The next book that I'm going to talk about, I feel like a lot of us are probably really pumped for, but that'd be Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. If you guys are not familiar with this series, this is actually Strange the Dreamer's second book. I cannot wait to see Laszlo and the Girls again. Honestly, this series is going to be phenomenal. It is a book that for reference, my husband doesn't really like YA. He doesn't necessarily, for some reason, he can always just kind of, he nitpicks it a little bit and it's not very enjoyable to him. But he was actually reading Strange the Dreamer to me one night and said, wow, this sounds really cool. And I can kind of see that why, um, you know, with Laszlo just being this kind of librarian and 
believing in the city and no one else believing in it and him wanting a little bit more information i can see why people are drawn to it to the magic aspect to the forgotten city kind of aspect i think it's really cool and i cannot wait for the second one but also at the same time i can wait for the second one because laney the way that you ended the first one was not okay for my heart all right like i was not okay and i read it right when it came out so i had to wait for freaking ever for the second one and I think I'm going to reread Stranger Dreamer probably just to break my own heart again to then read the second one to probably have my heart broken again. But I feel like a lot of us can probably relate. The next book I want to talk about is a book that I don't know a whole lot about but kind of reminds me of the Slender Man incident that happened not too long ago and it sounds just spooky enough that I think I'll like it. It's Broken Things by Lauren Oliver and essentially this follows two girls who are accused of reading this novel and then becoming inspired to actually kill one of their best friends but they didn't actually do it. And then on the anniversary of their friend's death, an insi a seemingly insignificant discovery resurrects the mystery again and pulls Mia and Bryn, our two main characters, back together. But as the lines begin to blur between past and present, fiction and reality, the girls must confront what really happened in the woods all those years ago, no matter how monstrous. So I feel like this is a book that's either going to be, hey, surprise, they did really do it, humans suck, or it's going to be that a supernatural being actually does exist and is the one who killed their friend. So for me, it just, it sounds just like creepy enough, but also like kind of thrillery enough that I'm gonna like it. It already has pretty good reviews, 3.8 out of 158 um, ratings and 71 reviews. So I'm really looking forward to this. It just sounds kind of creepy. Has anyone read this yet? Has anyone gotten arcs? If you have, let me know down below because it sounds really cool, but I know pretty much diddly about it. All right, now the next book I'm gonna talk about, I know nothing about, like literally nothing other than the main characters are all girls. There is an island that these kids that are stolen go to, and then they started fighting back and everyone's trying to figure out where these kids went, but it sounds creepy. It has four and a half star ratings already out of 142 ratings, and that'd be Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. This sounds pretty freaking creepy to me. Essentially, it says, beware of the woods and the dark, dank deep. He'll follow you home and he won't let you sleep. Who are the Saw Kill Girls? So there are one, two, three, three Saw Kill Girls, and their stories come together on the island of Saw Kill Rock, where gleaming horses graze in rolling pastures and cold waves crash against black cliffs, where kids whisper the legend of an insidious monster at parties and around campfires, where girls have been disappearing for decades, stolen away by a ravenous evil no one has dared to fight until now. So from what I've read of the description of this book, it just sounds like something I'm really gonna like. I like abandoned islands. I like that kind of storyline. I just think it sounds really cool. Let me know down below if you're one of the lucky few that actually got to read this before it came out. I would really love to know your thoughts. All right guys, so that is it. I will leave down below because I realized I didn't talk about this, all of the dates for every single one of these books. I cannot wait for most of these. I'm probably gonna actually sit down and just pre-order all of them because having sat down and re-gone over my list, I'm even more excited for them. But let me know down below the book that you are most looking forward to. But I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing and I will see you guys in my next video.